Welcome back to Learn Chinese with Shishan. This is Shishan. And in the following couple of videos, I am going to focus on the HSK4 test preparations in which I will tackle the questions for each part of the test. And don't forget that if you want to book a one-to-one -one lessons with me, you can find me on italki. You can book an hour of lessons so you can ask me some specific questions you have. And also, I can customize the study plan for you and fix some of your HSK4 problems. So this is just a shout out to say you can find me on italki. And in today's video, we are going to focus on the HSK4 reading part 1. So we have the listening part, we have the reading part, and we have the writing part. And in the following week, I'm going to give you some mini vocabulary lessons, mini grammar lessons, and also tips and techniques to tackle in the other part of the test. But today, we are only focusing on the reading and more specifically, part one. So in this part of the test, from the question 46 to 50 and the 51 to 55, they are kind of basically the same. In each of the section, you are giving six different words a, B, C, D, E, F, but one of them has already been fitted in the sentences correctly. So you will have five different words and you will have five different sentences. However, in the sentences, there is a part missing, the blank. So what you are supposed to do is put these five different verbs back to the blank of the sentences. That is to say, the sentences have one of its parts missing. So it could be an adjective, it could be a noun, it could be a verb, or it could be a conjunction. And this, what we call part of speech, it's actually only one part of the expert. We can look at this part of the test. So in the following, I'm going to give you three tactics and three steps to tackle the reading part one and this is the focus of today's lesson so let's get kids started so technique number one is to look for its context so what do i mean by its context let me give you some examples if you are given a word 钥匙, which means key you need to look around the sentences to look for the word men door or dai to bring daiyaoshi to bring the keys another example if you have words like yigong all together da yue about chapuduo almost guji estimated chaoguo over now what kind of words you should have looked for in the sentences exactly numbers it is numbers that you have to look for in the sentences. If you see the numbers in the sentences, that's probably it. The sentence that you have to put the words back to this blank. And if you have the word 收拾, which means to tidy up, to clean up, you have to look around the sentence to see if you can see the word 家 or 房子 or 房间. If you have the verb, which means to give injection, to give a shot, then you have to look around to see if there is 医院, 医生, 孩子, or 生病. Another example, if you are given 毕业, to graduate, then you have to look for 大学, university, 中学, middle school, 小学, primary school. The same with 作者, which means author. If you are given this word. You can either look for its martial word, which is wei, or you could look for xiao shuo, or shu, a book or a fiction. If you have the noun guan zhong for audience, then words like dian ying, uh, yan chu, movie, and performance should be somewhere around. So the examples I gave before is for what do I mean? by context. Technique number two is to look for its collocation. So what is the collocation? 
Collocation is a word or phrase that is often used with another word or phrase and it just sounds right when they are using together. So there are basically two kinds of collocation. One type of it, it's a very fixed collocation and the other type, it's quite loosened collocation. There are some very fixed collocations in Chinese and let me give you one example. If you're given the word Ying Xiang, which means impression, and this is actually a very common word to be tested in the HSK test. And there is a very fixed collocation with it. That is Liu Xia Ying Xiang to leave an expression. So when you got the word Ying Xiang, you have to be spontaneously very quickly look for the word. Liu xia, and vice versa. If you have the verb Liu xia to leave, you have to look around and see whether there is Ying xiang, because these are the signs in HSK4, and these are the common things that always tested repeatedly in the test. Let me give you another example of a fixed collocation. This one it's a little bit not too obvious and a little bit more difficult. For example, we are given the word 镜子, which is a noun for mirror. So in Chinese, the correct word and the only word that we use for looking in the mirror is... Do you know the word? And also I want to add in some point, when you learn the word 镜子, you have to learn it together. You have to learn these collocations together because this is just the only one verb we will use for looking in a mirror. And if up into this point during your study you really don't know how to say it, uh, you're welcome to check my recovery courses. And so what is the verb for this? It's zhao. So we say zhao jingzi means to look into the mirror to see um, whether my hair is okay, my clothes is okay. So, zhao jingzi. And as I say again, this is, is the only verb that we can use. There is no other verbs. So this is what I mean by fixed collocation. But we also have some kind of loosened collocation. Let me give you an example. For example, we can say, let's see the verb, jianshao. To reduce, we can say 减少误会, reduce misunderstanding, 减少排放, reduce the emission from the carbon dioxide, 减少污染, to reduce the pollution, and there are a lot of different objects can follow 减少, and this is what I call loose collocation. There are still collocations, but it's not like the Zhao Jingzi or Liu Xia Ying Xiang, that kind of fixed. So that is one way to look at the collocations. And now let's do a little bit of the part of speech thing. So for example, you have a verb and you have to look for its noun. If you have Shen Qing, for example, to apply, you have to look for Shen Qing, what? Uh, apply a tuition fee or to apply a visa. Uh, another example, if you have the verb 推迟, which means to postpone, so what things you will, will postpone, what object? Um, is it a match? 一个比赛吗? 还是一个会议, a meeting? So these are the things or the objects that you can look for for a verb. But there are other types of verbs, like a speech, kind of verb. For example, we have remind. You have to have somebody remind somebody else to do something. And pay to accompany. A person A has to accompany person B. So when you have pay this word, you have to look for two person, a person A and a person B in the sentences. So that's a little bit about the verb. And vice versa for now, a lot of times we have to look for the verb um, to make a verb and object combination or say it a verb phrase. And I have given you the two examples before, 印象, the impression, and 留下印象, 
that's the word for it. Jingzi, which is mirror. Then the word for it is zhao jingzi, to look into the mirror. But also, for now, besides being as an object after a verb, a lot of times it can also use as a subject. And in the HSK4 test, there is another way to look for the noun. So if you have the word d, and then after d, you see a blank, very certainly you have to look for a noun in the ABCDEF to put it back into this blank. So something, d, and then a noun. So this is another way to look at the noun. And one very interesting part of speech is adverb and it's because it is an adverb. An adverb should be put before a verb in Chinese. So whenever you have an adverb, firstly you have to recognize it is an adverb, of course. And, but you can always prepare for that because there are only maybe 20 or 30 adverbs altogether in HSK4, so nail those down, get those down, or at least to look through it uh, before the test. And that is going to help you for sure. And let's go back to why this is very interesting to have an adverb. That's exactly because if you had an adverb, if you recognize an adverb in one of the ABCDEF, then you need to and you have to look for a sentence right look at the sentence and to find the sentence that in which there is a blank before the verb and most of the case that could be the answer and then try to put this adverb back to the sentences and to see whether it fits in terms of the meanings so saying that um, it should be actually whenever you have an adverb in one of the ABCDEF, you have to be very thrilled and you have to feel um, and you have to feel good because the only things you need to do is to find a sentence that in which the blank um, in which there is something missing right before the main verb. Let me give you some examples. 按时, which means in time. So, 按时, what? To do what in time? 直接, which means directly. And to do what directly? We need to find a verb. 稍微, which means slightly. And slightly to do what? We have to find the verbs again. 故意, which means on purpose, intentionally, deliberately. So, to do what? Verbs again. Remember, a verb is a very good sign to look for in the reading part one. And our last type of this part of speech is actually adjective. Adjective can mainly use in two ways. So, before noun as an attribute or as the main verb kind of as a predicate in the sentences. There's two signs to look for an adjective and that is 更有点儿, um, So we have discussed the four part of speech which is verb, noun, adverb and adjective. So let's now move on to the technique number three which is to look for a grammar pattern or a grammar structure. So finally, we are getting to our last part of the tennis, which is to look for the grammar patterns or the grammar structure. The reason that why this is important is that uh, when you are learning the uh, specific grammar patterns, you have to know, you have to understand the most characteristic of this specific grammar Pattern. And I hope you can look into some other ones in HSK4 by yourself later. So the first grammar patterns I want to talk about is 千万. Right, this is a word, but when we use it, we tend to use it with a negation form. So 千万, then you plus a negation like 别, 
做某事，或不要做某事。So 千万别做，或千万不要做。When you have the word 千万 which is also a very common word to be tested, and you have to look for this negation, 不 or 别 or 没 this kind of negation. And the second example that I want to give you is 随着 the thing with this grammar piece. A 随着 B something like a verb. So A 随着 B verb. If you look at it in this way, you have to find also two things. That is A and B. So this is another grammar piece. Another one I want to talk about is 无论 Also, this is a conjunction. It means no matter. However, the grammar patterns follow with 无论 is that you either can follow a question form like 无论什么时候啊、uh, no matter when, or 无论 verb 不 verb 无论去不去啊、um, no matter you go or not. So. If you have the word 无论 so look for these two forms, question form, or something 不 something, and then you can put it back to the sentences. These are the three grammar patterns that are quite common to be tested in the HSK four, and these are the grammar pieces that I want to discuss with you. And next. We are going to see our three steps. So step number one, of course, is to look through the vocabularies, the words A, B, C, D, E, F. So when we are doing this, what to see? Well, firstly, the part of speech is very important if you can recognize them. Second, the meaning, of course, and the third thing, which is a very very important point, is to raise a question. Raise your question to yourself. What about it? What about this word? For example, we have the words 逛 right? So 逛 means to wander around somewhere. You have to think, wander around where, and then 尝 which means to taste, and then you have to think 尝 what to taste what, 陪 which is also a very common to be tested one. Which means a company, and for this pay, you have to find two person. So it is always person A, pay person B to do something, and you have to ask yourself, just ask yourself, who pay, who to do what, 谁陪谁做什么东西 Okay, now you have the word 距离 which is for distance, and then you have to think, um, 距离 from where. To where? So, 什么到什么的地方 Same as 区别 which means difference. And then you have to ask yourself, 区别 what and what 的区别什么 and 什么的区别 the difference between two things. Then you have to think about. You have to raise question about these two things, and it leads. To our second step, which is to read the sentences, of course, and when you read the sentences, you will certainly find the answers for these questions that you have raised to yourself in the step one. And also, when you read on these sentences, you can circle out the collocations, the context, and the grammars that, which is exactly what we have discovered in the. Technique part, and these kind of things can serve actually as a proof for why we have to put the word back to its blanket. And our last step is of course to、uh, put the words back to the sentences and read the whole sentences again to make sure the meaning, as well as the part of speech, fits correctly into the sentences. And until then,、uh, give a good applause to yourself. Until here, we also have finished today's video、It's、about the three techniques and three steps to tackling the HSK four reading part one. So in today's video, I only show you theory about how to tackle 
those problems but in the next videos i believe i will do one video on how i am actually doing with one or two maybe three with the the real exam paper real past papers to show you exactly specifically what i mean by these techniques and these steps and how to put it into real papers um, and also i want to be heads up one more time that if you want to book a one-to-one -one lessons with me you can find me in italki just search rushan liang or i believe maybe sammy liang more all the Chinese teachers. I hope you liked the video and I will see you soon. Zaijian!